assalamu alaikum students today we are going to start a new chapter graphs and this is chapter 10 of the book and in this uh, video we are going to cover the section 10.1 of the chapter so the chapter's name is graph and chapter number is 10 and the chapter summary uh, the topics uh, we are going to uh, learn in this chapter uh, are graphs and graph models and this is about 10.1 and then graph terminology and graph types so, uh, special types of graph this is 10.2 representing graphs and graph isomorphisms this is 10.3 and then connectivity uh, this is a bit of 10.4 so first of all let's start the section 10.1 which is about graph and graph models so in this uh, section uh, we will have a brief introduction to graphs and its different types, graphs taxonomy and graph models. So first of all, uh, definition of graph. Uh, what is graph? A graph G is equal to V E, consists of a non-empty set V of vertices or nodes. Vertices are also called nodes and a set E of edges. Each edge has either one or two vertices associated with it called its endpoints. An edge is said to connect its endpoints. So these are the vertices in uh, blue dots, vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, vertex D. So these are the vertices and the lines joining these vertices are called edges. Okay. So this is a graph with four vertices and five edges right one two three four five five edges so we have a lot of freedom when we draw a picture of graph all that matters is the connection made by the edges not the particular geometry depicted uh, for example the length of edges where the edges cross uh, how vertices are depicted and so on it uh, it uh, don't uh, uh, all don't matter so uh, we can join uh, A and B with an edge like this, a curved edge, okay? Uh, or we can uh, move B from here to here. So that uh, that is why that the remark is made that the length of the edge, shape of the edge, uh, doesn't matter. Position of uh, the vertex doesn't matter. It actually uh, shows the connection between one vertex to the other vertex. Uh, another remark, a graph with an infinite ver uh, vertex is called an infinite graph and graph with finite vertex vertices is called a uh, finite graph uh, and in this book we will study uh, about finite graphs. So some terminology about graphs, different types of graphs. Uh, first of all a simple graph, As, uh, in a simple graph each edge connects two different vertices and no two edges connect the same pair of vertices okay so multigraph may have multiple edges connecting the same two vertices when m different edges connect the vertices u and v we say uv is an edge of multiplicity m just like this this is a simple graph now in simple graph each edge connects two vertices okay each edge connects two vertices and no two edges connect the same pair of vertices right so this is called simple graph but in multigraph uh, uh, two vertices can be uh, connected by uh, more than uh, one edges so this is the non simple graph mul with multiple edges right an edge that connects a vertex to itself is called a loop a pseudograph may include loops as well as multiple edges connecting the same pair of vertices. So here is an example of a uh, pseudograph and this is called the loop because B is connected to itself. Similarly, there is a loop at C as well. C is connected to itself. So this is pseudograph and multiple edges, uh, uh, with having multiple edges and loops both. So there is no standard terminology for graph theory, so it is uh, crucial that you understand the terminology being used 
uh, whenever you read material about the graph. So that is why we are discussing this terminology. Uh, now uh, there are few definitions. Directed graph. Uh, a directed graph or digraph G is equal to VE consists of non-empty set V of vertices or nodes and a set E of directed edges or arcs. That is, the edges have direction either from A to B or uh, when it is uh, the edges joining two vertices A and B. So, it has a direction either from A to B or B to A. Now, each edge is associated with an ordered pair of vertices. The directed edges associated with the ordered pair u, v is said to start at u and end at uh, v. So, in case of directed edges, we have a starting point and the ending point. Uh, graphs with the endpoints or endpoints of an edge are not ordered are said to be undirected graphs. So, this is an example of directed graph. And this is an example of undirected graph. Okay. Again, terminology and definitions. A simple directed graph has no loops and no multiple edges like this. This is a simple directed graph. A directed multigraph may have multiple direct, uh, directed edges when they are indirected edges from the vertex u to vertex v. We said Say that uv is, UV is an edge of multiplicity m. Uh, for example, uh, in this graph, uh, we have AB, edge AB has multiplicity 1. And the multiplicity of BC, edge BC, okay. BC is 2 because we have two uh, edges joining B and C from B to C. Uh, graph models, uh, uh, few applications of graphs. Uh, first of all, computer network. When we build a graph model, we use the appropriate type of graph to capture. Uh, the important features of the application will illustrate this process using graph models of different types of uh, uh, computer networks. In all these graphs, graph models, the vertices represent uh, data centers and the edges represent communication links. So, to model a computer network where we are only concerned whether two data centers are connected by a communication link, we use a simple graph. This is appropriate type of graph when we only care whether two data centers are directly linked. Okay, and all the communication links work in both the directions. So this is an example. The to to model a computer network where we care about the number of links between data centers, we use multigraph like this. And to model a computer network where uh, diagnostic links at uh, data centers, we use a pseudograph as loops are needed. So, to model a network with multiple one way links, we use a directed multigraph. Okay. Note that we could use a directed graph with multiple edges if we only care whether there is at least one link from a data center to another data center. So, uh, this graph uh, is having multiple one-way links and two-way links as well. Graph terminologies summary. Uh, now this is uh, summarized in this table. Simple graph uh, has undirected edges uh, with no multiple edge allowed and no loop allowed. Okay. M multi graph uh, has under, uh, undirected edges uh, with uh, multiple edges allowed and 
no loops are allowed pseudograph is undirected uh, multiple edges are allowed and loops are also allowed in pseudographs simple directed graph are directed graphs of course uh, uh, as the name um, suggests and no multiple edges are allowed and no loops are allowed directed mul uh, multi graphs so they are directed they are multi graphs so uh, edges are directed multiple edges are allowed and loops are also allowed so mixed graph uh, in a mixed graph you can expect anything uh, it can be directed it can be uh, undirected it can be the combination of directed and undirected and it can have multiple edges it can have loops so uh, since this is mixed graph so it's a mixture of everything. it can be a mixture of everything okay other applications of graph so there are few other uh, applications of graph listed here, listed here social networks communication networks information networks software design uh, transportation networks biological networks so it's a challenge to find a subject to which graph theory has not yet been applied so uh, if you can find you can let me know okay graph models of social networks graph can be used to model social structures based on different kinds of relationship between people or groups in a social network vertices represent individuals or organizations and edges represent relationships between them so uh, useful graph models of social network include friendship graphs undirected graph where two people are connected if they are friends okay so uh, to be well connected if they are friends in the real world on facebook or in a particular uh, virtual world and so on wherever they are friends they are they can be connected by the graphs collaborative graphs undirected graphs where two people are connected if they collaborate in a specific way so people are uh, vertices here and uh, connection uh, is an edge if they are uh, they collaborate uh, in any manner influence graphs directed graphs because uh, uh, one can be influenced by the other okay so it must be a directed graph directed graphs where there is an edge from one person to another if the first person can influence the second person so there is an example of friendship graph this is a, this is undirected graph and uh, you can see jan is uh, friend of paula paula is friend of andrew and and so on and inference graph it shows us we can read this graph as uh, brain influence linda right similarly uh, fred is influenced by debro or debro influence fred fred influence brain and so on hollywood models example of collaboration graphs so uh, uh, previously we uh, studied example of social networks now examples of collaboration graphs more examples on collaboration graphs uh, the hollywood graph models uh, the collaboration of actors in films we represent actors by vertices and we connect two vertices if the actors uh, they present uh, they represent have appeared in the same movie okay an academic collaboration graph model the collaboration of researchers uh, who have jointly written a paper in particular subject and we represent researchers in particular academic discipline using vertices and we connect the vertices representing two researchers in this discipline if they are co-authors of paper information networks so application to information networks uh, graphs can be used to model different types of uh, networks that link different types of information in a web page web, page, uh, web pages are represented by vertices and links are represented by directed uh, edges a web graph models the web at particular time and the web graph is used by search engines uh, citation network 
research paper in a particular discipline are represented by where it says when a paper cites a second paper as a reference uh, there is an edge from the vertex representing this paper to the vertex represented the second paper now graph models are extensively used in the study of transportation networks so now we study uh, a few examples of transportation graphs airline networks can be modeled using directed multi uh, graphs where airports are represented by vertices each flight is represented by a directed edge from the vertex representing the departure airport to the vertex representing uh, representing the destination airport similarly we have road networks and road networks can be modeled uh, using graphs where vertices uh, represent intersections and the edges represent roads undirected edges represent two way roads and directed edges represent one way roads uh, software design application uh, in graphs so graph models are extensively used in software design uh, we'll introduce two such models here uh, one representing the dependency between the uh, modules of a software application and the other representing restrictions in the execution of the statement in computer program so when a top down approach is used to design software the system is divided into modules each performing a specific task so we use a module dependency graph to represent the dependency between these modules these dependencies need to be understood before coding can be done in a module dependency graph vertices represent software modules and there is an edge from one module to another uh, module if the second module depends on the first okay it makes sense of course uh next software design application continued so next uh, application we can use directed graph called a precedence graph to represent which statement must have already been executed before we execute each statement so vertices represent statements in a computer program and there is a directed edge from a vertex to the second vertex if the second vertex cannot be executed before the first so uh, for example s1 a is equal to 0 s s1 represents a, a is equal to 0 s2 is represents b is equal to 1 and c, s3 represents c is equal to a plus 1 so before executing c, uh, s3 it is uh, uh, a must to execute s1 so uh, you can see s1 is connected to s3 by an edge right uh, similarly s1 is connected to s5 because s5 is e is equal to d plus and what is d d is equal to b plus a so uh, uh, if we don't have value of a we cannot execute s5 so that is how uh, uh, these uh, statements are connected next uh, area of application of uh, graphs biological graph uh, applications graph models are used extensively in many areas of biological sciences uh, we will describe two such models one to ecology and the other to uh, molecular biology so first is niche overlap graphs model competition between species in an ecosystem so this is an example of ecology vertices represent species and an edge connects two vertices when they represent species who compete for food resources so this is uh, the niche overlap graph uh hawk and owl are connected it means uh, they compete for uh, food resources uh woodpecker and squirrel are connected woodpecker is also connected to shrew and uh, mouse is uh, only connected to shrew so uh, whenever the species compete for food resources they are connected uh, with the edges next uh, biological application we can model the intersect uh, interaction of proteins in a cell using a protein interaction network 
in a protein interna interaction network graph, uh, vertices represent proteins and vertices are connected by an edge if the protein they represent interact. Protein interaction graphs can be huge and can contain more than 100,000 vertices each representing a different protein and more than million edges each representing an interaction between the proteins. Protein interaction graphs are often split into small graphs called modules so that we can handle them easily which represent the interactions between proteins involved in a particular function. So here is a graph model. Uh, protein interaction network and uh, this is a module of the protein interaction graph of proteins that uh, degrade RNA in human cells and this RNA uh, reminds me of uh, uh, current situation COVID-19 as they say uh, Corona doesn't have DNA it has RNA okay so let's uh, review the things we learned uh, there is a graph uh, in front of you and let's see what are the properties it holds it is a simple graph the edges are undirected and there are no parallel edges or loops parallel edges are uh, called multiple edges as well uh, multiple edges in one direction are called parallel edges since this is undirected graph so uh, uh, no, no edge has any direction but there are no parallel edges that is there are no uh, uh, multiple edges okay this is the second uh, graph and the properties it holds it is a pseudo graph because it contains multiple edges or parallel edges you may say it contains loops as well okay and since uh, directions are not given so uh, edges are un undirected okay it contains loops it contains multiple edges that is parallel edges and that is uh, why this is a pseudo graph and this is single graph okay there is another uh, this is directed one clearly we can see that we can predict uh, immediately that this is directed graph so what are the other properties this is directed graph, both directed edges are directed, but there are no parallel edges. Now, this no parallel edges mean there are uh, no multiple edges in one direction. Okay, so uh, there is an edge from D to C, but there is only one edge from D to C. So and the other edge which connects uh, D and C uh, is uh, a directed edge from C to D. So that is why there are no parallel edges. Now again this is a directed graph and you can see here the parallel edges right. More than uh, one edge uh, are connecting, connecting to uh, vertices in same direction so this is a directed a directed multigraph the edges are directed and there is a set of parallel edges okay so these are the few examples uh, of the graphs which we discussed in this video okay next this is the question from exercise uh, the intersection uh, there is another type of uh, uh, graph okay a collaborative graph friendship graph and now here is an uh, other type which is called interaction graph oh, sorry intersection graph right intersection graph the intersection graph of a collection of sets a1 a2 an is the graph that has vertex for each of these sets and has an edge connecting the vertices representing two sets if these sets have non-empty intersection that is why this is called intersection graph construct the intersection graph of these uh, collections of sets we have a collection of sets a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 so first of all we will draw uh, five uh, 
vertices a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 now we are going to connect uh, the uh, if uh, two of them has non empty intersection then uh, both would be connected first of all let's see uh, a1 uh, whether a1 and a2 are connected okay uh, there is uh, a non empty intersection between a1 and a2 because 0 is common and 2 is common and similarly 4 is common between these two sets so a1 is connected to a2 you can see the line now uh, a1 and a3 see there is no common point between a1 and a3 so there is no connection between a and a right uh, a1 and a4 uh, we have a common elements that is intersection is not empty so a1 and a4 are connected a1 and a5 again uh, they, they are uh, common elements so a1 a5 are also connected okay now uh, let's see uh, what about a2 a2 a3 a2 and a3 uh, have common elements so a2 and a3 are connected a2 and a4 a2 and a4 uh, have empty intersection okay so uh, that is why a2 and a4 are not connected and a2 and a5 a2 and a5 are connected because intersection is non empty and so on so you can check for a3 a4 and a4 right so this is the graph uh, which is called intersection graph okay next Question number 15 uh, of the book. Construct a niche overlap graph for six species of birds where the hermit thrush competes with robin and with the blue jay and the robin also competes with mockingbird and the mockingbird also competes with the blue jay. And the nuthatch competes with the hairy wood pecker. Okay, so uh, first of all, what is uh, the uh, uh, niche overlap graph? Okay, do you remember what is the niche overlap graph? So let me recall this first. Okay, niche overlap graph. Here we go. A niche overlap graph model competition between species. Okay. Uh, this is the competition between species in an ecosystem. And vertices represent species, and an edge connects two vertices when they represent species who compete for food resources. Okay. So we are going to connect those species who uh, compete for food resources now i, I think you, you can uh, make uh, you can understand what was required in the question so uh, see we draw a picture graph in question which is a simple graph two vertices are joined by an edge if we are told that the species compete such as robin and mockingbird but there is no edge between the pairs of species that are not given as competitors okay like robin and blue jay so let's see uh, how uh, does the graph look like here we go so uh, read the question again construct the nature overlap graph for six species of birds where the hermit thrush now where is hermit thrush here is hermit thrush Hermit thrush compete with the robin. Okay, so hermit thrush compete with the robin. So that is why uh, there is uh, an edge between hermit thrush and the robin. 
and hamid thresh also competes with blue jay so there is an edge between hamid thresh and blue jay right okay next the robin also compete with mockingbird so there is uh, robin robin competes with mockingbird so uh, uh, you can see the edge between rock, uh, robin and mockingbird so uh, her mate thrush uh, competes uh, robin and robin also competes with mockingbird so uh, uh, robin uh, is connected to two species okay uh, similarly her mate thrush also connected to two species because it competes with blue jay and it competes with robin okay what uh, next uh mockingbird also competes with blue jay okay so the mockingbird also competes with blue jay so mockingbird uh, is also connected to two species hermit thrush is also connected to two, two species blue jay is connected to two species robin is connected to two species and what about the next part of the question because we can see uh, there is all alone edge uh, and not hedge competes with hairy woodpecker so uh, not hedge competes none of the other species okay this competes with hairy woodpecker and hairy woodpecker competes with not hedge uh, uh, not hedge so not hedge and hairy woodpecker are connected and they are connected to each other only uh, none of them is connected to uh, any of the rest of the species so this is how we can construct a niche overlap graph well next question this is also uh, a question from exercise question number 19 construct an inference graph now in this question we have to construct an inference graph uh, for the board members of uh, company if the president can influence the director of research and development the director of marketing and the director of operations the director of research and development can influence the director of operations the director of marketing can influence the director of operations and no one can influence or be influenced by the chief financial officer okay so uh, here all these directors and officers are the uh, nodes or vertices and edges uh, will be made by the uh, influence of uh, one to on the other okay so let's see how uh, it works so we draw a picture of the graph in the, uh, this question which is directed graph we draw an edge from u to v if we are told that you can influence v so uh, this is what uh, Uh, we learned while uh, uh, defining the inference graph. For instance, the chief financial officer is an isolated vertex since uh, she is influenced by no one. Influences no one. Okay. So uh, let's see uh, how the graph looks like. So this is the graph. Uh, so let's start reading and let's see how uh, these edges are drawn. Uh, construct an inference graph for the board members of the company if the president can influence so this is the president president can influence the director of research okay director of research and development so president can influence so this is the direction president influences director of research and uh, development okay the director of marketing president also uh, influences the director of marketing and the director of operations right so you can see the uh, arrows uh, the direct uh, and next director of research and development can influence director of operations so this is the director of research and development it can, and he can or she can influence the uh, director of operations the director of uh, marketing can influence uh, the director operations so here we go this is this edge represents this relation and uh, no one can influence or be influenced by 
the chief financial officer and this is we have already discussed that uh, this will be an isolated uh, node this is not connected to anyone because uh, 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 chief financial officer is not influenced by anyone or and chief financial office cannot uh, officer cannot influence someone else so uh, that is why you can see uh, the isolated node here so that's all for today i hope uh, you, know, you uh, will, would have understood the idea of uh, graphs and their applications and different terminology of the graph uh, and uh, if you have any question you can ask me uh, on monday so that's all see you on monday take care bye bye